Hello, good evening uh, to everyone. Uh, Mr. Lara, welcome. Mr. Gerardo, welcome to. Good evening, sir. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Uh, can you hear me, sir? You see the audio? Yes, yes. Good or bad? This is good. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. So, uh, we're going to start right now with the conference that correspond for tonight's class. Um, first of all, uh, we're going to um, uh, study uh, some of the topics for the section number two. And uh, we're going to be watching some videos and then we're going to be discussing uh, based on the um, exercises that we're going to be developing uh, tonight also, uh, the grammar rules that uh, we have on the platform, okay? So uh, let's start. Just let me let me show you something here. Okay, um, here we have, it says that by the end of, um, by the end of this class, you will learn about the best jobs based on personality types, okay? So this is going to be um, a, the, the aim uh, of this class, um, something that we're going to try to achieve tonight. Let's start with our personality types. And it says best jobs based on personality. Um, we have an instructions here and it says, watch the video below and take notes of the different personality type, um, as well as the best jobs, best suite for each personality. After watching the video below, write in the discussion forum, what personality type you are and what type of job uh, you do okay um we're going to do the following uh first of all we're going to watch the video uh, the, the video is called social social career and um after that we are going to create a, a profile of, of what we do um on our company or in in, in this case in, in in our jobs okay so we are going to um do that and then after uh, all this profile, we're going to make a, a, a presentation that is going to be long, no more than uh, two minutes, okay? So, but first of all, let's start watching the video. Can you listen to the audio? No, teacher. No? Okay. What about now? Can you listen to the audio? Yes, yes. Yes, teacher. Okay. Let's start watching. Uh, please pay attention to, to this video, and then we're going to start with um, the activity for tonight. Welcome to Matheson College. I'm Jamie Fish. Some students arrive on campus with clear career ambitions, but most students need some help figuring out which field of study is right for them. The good news is, help is available. 
I'm here with Jacqueline Auden, a career advisor from the Career Services Department here on campus. Ms. Auden, you've advised a lot of students over the years about choosing a major and a career path. What should students consider? Well, Jamie, one of the first things to consider is your personality type. Well, along with your skills, abilities, and personal preferences, your personality type can guide you toward finding a major that best suits you. Okay. So how many personality types are there? Uh, there are six basic personality types. Hmm. Artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Now, the first type is artistic. These people are creative and imaginative, and they prefer to work on one project at a time rather than multitasking. What careers should artistic types pursue? The most important thing for this type of people is being in charge of a creative project. So careers to consider are landscaping, graphic design, web design. I see. The next personality type is conventional. Tell us about that one. Yes, conventional types are practical and orderly. They respond well to rules, procedures, schedules, things like that. Hmm. What types of careers do conventional type people usually enjoy? Conventional types often enjoy numbers, and they're also good with measuring and analyzing things in general. So often they tend to be bankers, lawyers, building inspectors, and technical writers. Are they good business people? Sure, they can be. But they usually work for others. The next type, enterprising people, those are the business owners. Ah, the enterprising type. What characteristics do those people share? They tend to be leaders. They're independent and willing to take risks. They're good at motivating people, so we often find them in sales. Really? Hmm. What careers do they enjoy, aside from sales? Well, they're good at directing projects and people. So they make good managers. Okay, so that's three types. Let's take a look at the fourth type, investigative. Well, this type of person prefers logic to imagination and tends to be precise and detailed. So Jamie, what are some careers that you think would suit this type of person? Hmm. Science would probably be appealing. You're right. Uncovering mysteries is key to any type of science. But librarians are also the investigative type. Really, any career that involves research fits into this category. Hmm. So that brings us up to the fifth type, realistic. Yes, realistic types like to work with their hands, with tools. They want to see the results of their work in physical terms. Hmm. That sounds like repair people to me. Yes, that's right. Also jewelry makers, builders, and engineers. So now for the sixth personality type, which is the one that describes me best. Yes, I think you're right. The last type is social. Social types like people. Their jobs usually involve helping and communicating with others. Oh, but teaching would appeal to social types. Oh, yes. Medicine, coaching, broadcast journalism, and, of course, career advising. That's us, social types. Ms. Auden? Thank you for sharing this information with us. It was my pleasure, Jamie. Well, we hope this information has been helpful to you. If you'd like to learn more, visit the Career Services Department and tell them Jamie sent you. Okay, um, there we have the video. And as you notice, we have a, how many type of career? Do you pay attention to it? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, teacher, can you repeat? My, my question, yes. Uh, how many type of careers yes. do we have on the video? Four. Just one? Six. Six, uh, yes, we have six careers. Um, can you remember some of them? Investigative. Okay, investigative. Lawyer. 
Which one? Science. Science. Science is part of Science. the jobs that uh, some careers develops. But um, I think you refers to uh, investigated people, right? Okay. Right. Well, yes. Okay. Um, what else? We have investigated people. I mean, uh, investigative uh, career. What else? We have social Artistic. careers. Artistic careers. Okay. What else? There are two missing. Enterprising. Enterprising careers. Okay. Two missing. Um, conventional. Convention. Conventional, yes, conventional careers. There is just one missing. You remember? Realistic. Realistic, yes, that, that's the career. So here we have the six personality types, a artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Okay, guys, uh, we're going to develop an activity right now. As I said at the beginning, we're going to identify what a kind of this um, a personality fits with us. That's what we're going to do. Uh, after you have decided which one, you are going to explain why uh, you think that that one, that personality uh, fits you and also you are going to explain what you do in your job, what uh, the reasons that uh, makes you take that decision. Is it clear what we're going to do? Thank you, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, one question, teacher. Tell me. Uh, what is the convention? Convention. Convention. Okay, uh, I'm going to I'm going to give you uh, this example um, uh, here. Uh, just give me a <clears throat> second. I'm going to move this here. Okay. Um, conventional is here. Okay. Conventional, here we have, it says in the video that um, this type of person is practical and elderly, respond well to rules. When, uh, when people are conventional, uh, they all likes to uh, be practical. So, um, and they, uh, if you gives them some um, specific like functions uh, in a company, uh, he tries to respond to those functions, to, to those old roles that he is going to be developing on, the, on on his job, okay? So uh, what kind of um, careers uh, fits better here? Okay, I'm going to share this. Okay, here we have the first person you can mention are sort of like ba uh, banking, law, building, in, in, inspection and technical writing the, those those jobs are the be, the, the ones that uh, fits best um in 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 conventional okay thank you teacher okay sir do you have any other question do you have any <clears throat> other question no teacher Okay, thank you, sir, Mr. Uh, Gerardo. Okay, very good. So um, if you don't have any other question, uh, what we're going to do is uh, take around 10 minutes to, in order to create or profile and uh, look for reasons, try to look for reasons uh, that uh, you can express in, in the general video conference in order to give um, one of these uh, or, or to choose one of these um, uh, careers, okay? So go ahead. 
If you have any question, I will be here. Teacher, I, I don't understand. You don't understand? <clears throat> okay, um, no. Miss, what we're going to do here is to check the six personality, uh, personality types. We have artistic, conventional, enterprising, investigative, realistic, and social. Okay, according to you, what um, you think is the uh, best that, uh, I mean, uh, according to you, what you think um, could be fits in your uh, job? Are you artistic? Are you conventional? Are you enterprising? Are you investigative? Are you realistic or are you social? What do you think according to your job? Uh, okay. And is write a paragraph about this personality? Yes, you are going to write a paragraph if you want, or if not, you can just express what you think um, in order to give like a um, profile of what you do and why you think this personality uh, fits with you. Okay. Okay. Thank so, you. Okay. Go ahead. So you have 10 minutes. Starting right now.
um, guys, when you finish, please let me know. I have a four to show. Okay, okay. Uh, just let me know when you finish, okay? ¿Ya están listos? No, are you ready?
Yes, teacher. Okay, very good. So, um, who wants to start first? Miss, you want to start first? Hello? Me, teacher. Okay, so, sir, tell me. Which one uh, do you decide? Are, okay, the artistic. artistic. Uh, all the people that I have... All the people that I have some kind of art, like uh, graphic designer, architects, interior designer, ambiental designer, etc. And uh, enterprising, uh, all the people to dedicate are your ability and creation, for example, jam sellers, shirt designer, or serigraphers, or many stuff. And realistic, I think there are the people who work in like a lawyers, accountant, business administration, veterinarians, and the same as the social and social people of kind of people like uh, sellers. And the conventional, I think there are the people in necessary jobs in the society, like a policeman, postman, barber, and the investigate. They are very, they are very dedicated people and the science like a uh, inventor and the scientific. Okay, sir. Um, thank you. Uh, sir, Mr. Gerardo, um, according to your job, what, you, what do you think uh, is the best that fits to you? According to my job, I think the artistic. You're artistic. Oh, okay. Why do you think that? Uh, uh, because I am an architect. Ah, you are an architect. Okay, very good. That means you are all time like uh, creating designs for something, uh, some for some buildings and etc. Right? Exactly. Uh, usually, is artists are realistic, but because uh, I think I create the the the, the idea client for the real stuff on the paper on the computer. Oh, okay, okay, very good, excellent. So, thank you, sir. Very good. Um, okay. Let's see now to Mr. Lara. Mr. Lara, Miguel Lara. Hi, teacher. Okay, yes, you. I, Tell me. I think my job is conventional. Conventional? I work in finance. I work in finance. Ah, in finance. Okay. Yes, we create adaptation for change, easing of making decision, mm -hmm. ability to live a team, um, ability to detect opportunities. Mm -hmm. Is our characters. Okay, very good. So, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, now let's listen to Ms. Duran. Tell me, Ms. Hi, good evening. Um, yeah. I think my job is focusing realistic personality that uh, tight because uh, all time I see numbers and budgets um projection of the market and margins and monthly result mm -hmm. oh, okay. that's it okay very good excellent thank you mm, miss castro good evening good evening miss welcome so tell me um i think 
Andre have um, a conventional career. Um, I am in the business area. Mm, in the company where I am, I am charged of writing um, emails, send sensitive information, transmit and support to the other areas. Um, the regulations of the process and guidelines to be followed within the company. Oh, okay, very <clears throat> good. Thank you. Nice. Now let's listen to Thank you. Santos. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Um, I think that according to my job, the personality type, uh, we it's necessary to be investigated oh. because day by day, yes, because we I, I work in a laboratory oh. and uh, yes, and day by day we need to discover new things, new formulas, and try to solve some difficulties about the products to improve the quality of, of the for, formulas and the and products and the to be sure the quality all the all the, in the all the process okay okay very good so yes okay thank you thank you um let's listen now to mr uh mr lara do you already participate Mr. Lara, do you already participate? Yeah, teacher. You, do you participate? Yeah. Okay, before. Oh, okay, very yes. good. So, is there someone missing? Is someone missing? Me, teacher. Oh, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Well, uh, good evening, everybody. I consider three careers. Oh, okay. Enterprising. Tell me realistic and social oh, enterprising because uh, enterprising because i am dc manager in my company and i like uh, i like to be a leader realistic because i study to be an engineer and i am and social because i like to work with the people and learn with them I give them coach every time I can, and I give the advice for the job of their careers too. Okay, very good, excellent, sir, excellent. So uh, you have like a combination of, of three of them, very good. So yes, uh, yes. now, okay, sir, uh, now we're going to move to the platform in this corporativo, uh, and now, we're going the to first check uh, the following, uh, the following information. We have a lesson of Jetty and the lesson of Jetty says that by the end of this class, participants will learn how to use gerund phrases as subjects and objects. What are gerunds? Do you know what are gerunds? Or do you know what gerunds are? Do you know what gerunds are? The bird with okay. ing yes. okay yes um <clears throat> when we have gerund that means we have um very with ing but do you know the functions of of the uh, gerunds do you know what is the function of the gerunds Do you know the, the do you know what is the function of the gerund? Saben cuál es eh, la función del gerundio? Um, an action, demonstrate an action. Mm, kind of. OK. 
Okay, what else? It's a function not personal mm. of the verb. Okay, kind of. Okay, I will explain this. Um, adjourned is, uh, as you said, is a verb with the uh, ing form. Okay, that's a gerund. But the function of the gerund um, correspond to the meaning of the word. What does it mean? Uh, what, I, oh, what I mean with that? Um, a gerund is a verb with the ing form that functions as, sometimes as subjects, as subjects, or um, uh, uh, participles, okay? So, um, I'm going to share to you the video and there you're going to be to check some, well, later we're going to check some examples of it, of how we use uh, the gerund. As I said, a gerund is, a, is a, a, a word that we use a subject, but this gerund correspond to a verb with the ing form. Is it clear what I'm saying? Kind of, okay. Think about this. Um, when we talk about gerunds, um, it, it's because we have a, a verb uh, like um, walk, okay? So uh, we're going to think in this, in this verb, walk. You know that walk is a verb, it's an action, okay? Like walk. Um, sometimes we can uh, change the, the, the structure of that verb or the meaning of that verb um, for something different that can function as a, as a subject. What does it mean subject? It's like um, the, the, the oh, oh, what are we talking about? So this, this, is, this is who are we talking about in the uh, sentence? Um, so sometimes also the gerund functions as an object, okay, as nouns. Uh, take it uh, or, or going back to, to, the, to the word to do the example, walk. So if we uh, change it to a gerund, we're going to have walking, okay? We have another, another, uh, Another word that means uh, the the um, same, but this this word is function as a uh, noun in, in the sentence. For instance, I can say, "Let's go uh, for let's go walking." Okay, let's go walking. Walking. What I mean with that, I'm not uh, asking you. Uh, or I'm not referring you to the action of walking or I, I'm not using it as a verb, as a main verb. Okay, the main verb there is let's go. And walking is function as an object in the, in, the, um, in the sentence. We're going to see some examples here and maybe uh, that uh, may, could be a little bit more clear. Let's watch it. Okay, I'm just sharing my screen. Okay, pay attention to this. Welcome to this class. In this class, what we want to do is we want to practice gerund phrases. And so we're going to learn how gerunds are used as subjects and also how they're used as objects. And uh, you might have seen and you might be a little bit confused about this whole deal here. So, for example, whenever you see, uh, like at hotels, you see no smoking, uh, no parking, all of that. You might think that that is wrong, but actually it's not. And then we're going to try to make sense of all of that here. Um, and then, so let me give you an example on how this is used. So we're going to talk a little bit about politics uh, a little bit. Uh, not going to details, of course, but just some general things about it. Uh, so running for office. Well, look at a couple of sentences here and then uh, just see some common things that politicians say whenever they're running for office. 
Well, and the, the first thing is boating is. Sorry, I will change the resolution of the video because uh, I think you can read what is in the in the video. Okay. Is an important responsibility. Um, improving our schools, fighting for a new hospital, etc. So let me quickly outline that this is a gerund. So a gerund is simply a verb which uh, you um, add ing to, all right? And then, and of course, there's some spelling things about it that you might have learned in previous classes. But here are some examples on how gerunds are, are used either as subjects of sentences. So for example, boating is an important responsibility. Boating is the subject of our sentence. So it's not acting as a verb. Let's discuss improving our school. So as you can see there, we're using that as an object. And so let's try to make sense of all of this. A couple of more examples. Choosing a candidate takes time. And um, let me point out um, the gerunds here. So choosing a candidate, that's, that's the subject of our sentence. I enjoy working for the people. Okay, that's uh, working in that case is not acting as a verb, it's acting as the object of our sentence. Uh, do you resent paying higher taxes? Again, pain is not the verb, it's, it's, it's the gerund that is being used um, as, a, as an object there. So now that I gave a few examples on how gerunds are used as subjects and how they're used as objects, I would like to go into details now and talk a little bit about the usage of gerunds. And the first thing that I'm going to mention is that uh, in this case, in this lesson, we're using gerunds as nouns. So we're using them as people, places, or things. And so we're familiar with the verb work, for example. And if we include ing, then we turn that into a gerund, right? But now we're going to use this gerund as either a subject of a sentence or as the object of, a, of the sentence. And that's what we're going to learn. So let's take a look at the, another gerund. So for example, the verb they. I'm sorry, the verb pay, we turn that into a gerund by simply adding ing, and then we have pain. Improve, and of course, there are some spelling things that you should have learned in previous classes. Uh, and uh, we remove that e, for example, and then we add ing, and so we have improving. Let's go into some details now, and let's talk a little bit about gerunds and particularly gerunds being used as subject of sentences. So on the screen right now, we can see that a gerund can be the subject of a sentence. And a couple of grammar rules to learn is that it is always going to be singular. It's always going to act as a third person. And so let's look at that. Voting is an important responsibility. Choosing a candidate takes time. And as you can see, those are subjects of sentences. And uh, the idea here is that this is going to be singular. So we're always going to have a singular verb. Like in this case, voting is an important responsibility. We could say voting was or voting will be. But the idea is that it's going to be singular. And then the other example, choosing a candidate takes time. Again, choosing becomes the subject of our sentence. And so it becomes a thing, not necessarily um, a verb. Um, and then, of course, we need to follow that grammatical rule that we need to add S to that verb. When talking about this topic, it's important not to confuse the gerunds with the present progressive. So let me give you an example about that. If I express, I'm voting today, uh, really what I'm saying is that it's an action that is happening today. Right? It, it could be in the future, by the way, as well, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Um, and on the other hand, voting is an important responsibility. So in that particular case, I'm using that as a present progressive form. On the other hand, I'm using that as a gerund. So I'm using that as the object of my sentence. And so there, it's a verb. And the second example, it's, a, it's the subject of a sentence. And so let me just give you a quick example of what I want you to do. So what is exciting for you? Well, windsurfing is exciting. Windsurfing is very exciting. Playing soccer is exciting. Going to the movies is exciting. So all of those expressions that you've heard in the past, 
and they don't quite make that much sense this should make a lot more sense now and so what I would like for you to do is to take that concept then and tell me what makes you laugh what gives you a headache what is impolite what is popular in your country what destroys the environment and what uh, can be dangerous. Alright teacher, let me try the first one. For me, watching comedy movies makes me laugh. For me, learning math gives me a headache. Using yourself on in class isn't polite. Playing basketball is popular in my country. Burning fossil fuels destroys the environment. Not taking action on weapons of mass destruction can be dangerous. Now let me talk about the last part of our class and what we want to do next is we want to learn how gerunds can also be the objects of sentences. And so let me give you a few examples about that. So we heard politicians say, I suggest improving our schools. So as you can see, the suggest is our verb and improvement becomes the object of our sense. So it's no longer a verb. I enjoy working for the people. This is what politicians say. And what we want to do here is we want to use gerunds as objects. So they both enjoy. What do they enjoy? They enjoy watching the birds. And then they, I mean you could you could have said uh, different things. So what I will also like for you to do is to try to make sense of all of this and try to complete this exercise. So I'll have my virtual students try this out. But I will also like for you to try this out as well. So this is quite easy. Hi John, I need a ride to the airport. Would you mind taking me? I don't mind taking you. I'm heading that way anyways. Dad, can I go outside and play? Have you finished doing your homework? Why did Javier look so sad today? I think he really misses being away from home during holidays. Okay, um, do we have the video um, that is about gerunds? Uh, I know the gerunds can be like a little bit com a com complex um, because how we use it. But we have to uh, keep something in mind. W when we use gerunds is when uh, we use verbs as nouns with ing. That, that's the uh, what what gerunds mean okay the use of birds with ing as nouns in a sentence okay Th then we have some, some examples of, of gerunds like the objects example, when it, when let me try the first one. windsurfing the concept then and when tell me what say here like in the example windsurfing is very exciting if you uh, take some elements of the of the sentence, you know that all sentence need a subject. Okay, all sentence needs a verb and also a complement sometimes. Um, if we notice the example here, that means uh, that we have those three elements. But what's happening there? Windsurfing is an activity. It's a verb. Windsurf. Okay, windsurf is a verb. It's an action that someone does. Um, but when we add the ing form, we can use this word as a noun, okay? As a subject. Subject noun means the same, okay? So windsurfing, it's becoming a subject. So the example that we have here is windsurfing is very exciting. Is is the word. Is is the word that is the main verb in the sentence. Windsurf is the subject, and very exciting is the complement. So we have the three elements that correspond to a sentence, subject, verb, and complement. Those three things that we're going to, to use it. So that's mean that, that that's happened um, sometimes, or it happens, sorry, sometimes that we can confuse the gerund with the present progressive. Why? Because um, as you know, the ing form, or as you know, uh, we add uh, to invert the ing form to create a noun. But when we use uh, the present progressive, 
we are adding the ing form because the action is happening in that moment. So as, as the title say, uh, simple uh, present progressive, okay? Simple present progressive because it's happening in the moment. It's like, uh, uh, it's like if I say I'm teaching English, okay? I'm teaching, I'm doing it right now. So what does it mean? Uh, um, or how can we use that verb as a noun, okay? How we can do it? Let's think about it. For instance, we can say, instead of saying, uh, we said at the beginning, um, I am teaching, okay? Teaching is the, the present uh, progressive, but if I use teaching as a noun, I need to identify it like say, uh, by saying, for instance, teaching, okay, this is the subject, is a, one of my favorite uh, a, well, activities. For instance, teaching is one of my favorite activities. Teaching is working as a noun in the sentence. It's working uh, as the subject of the sentence. And the rest is, um, in this case, is the verb, is the, the uh, what we are using as verbs. Is it clear what I'm saying? Is it clear what I'm saying? Yes, no, please let me know. More or less, teacher. More or less. So, uh, you're going to have an act, uh, an activity, and well, um, but uh, in order to do that activity, we're going to watch a video. I will send some videos to you about this uh, this information because it's so important that you can manage it uh, in in English because uh, in that way you can improve your vocabulary and also your uh, structure. Okay, so. Let's start. Um, the video that I'm going to be uh, sharing, that says it's about the gerunds. There you are going to have a, so, some exercises, so you can do it there. Um, because of the time, I, can, I cannot continue with you guys, but I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to be developing um, some exercises and it's better if you uh, take a look to this topic because I will be asking some questions tomorrow about this. Okay, do you have any question? Yes, no? No, no, no. no. okay, so see you tomorrow then and have a nice night. Bless it for everybody. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. See you tomorrow. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, sir.